So my name is Reese Walker. I run the distribution Inch by Inch along with Oliver Bernstein and Matthias Hartmann. And I also am responsible for the label Rand Music Recordings. So the history of Rand Music is actually a very long one. The pressing plant originally came from a group of labels. Some of them then started the pressing plant Rand Music Record Manufacturing and I came to Leipzig without any plan and was looking for a job. I knew Low Tech from Workshop Records and he recommended that I ask the pressing plant if they have something here for me. And they didn't, but they gave me the opportunity to start a label. Yeah, the rest is, is history. Yeah. At the start, it was important for us to do vinyl only, being the label of a pressing plant. But over time, the label developed into its own identity and its own thing. The biggest push was that artists wanted to have their music on Spotify and on streaming services. In the end, the decision was really mostly about exposure to reach bigger audiences than having a vinyl only situation where only DJs or vinyl collectors are playing new music. What we value well, with the cooperation with Dictus would first and foremost be that labels and my own label uh, have the opportunity to upload their own music how they want to have it and to deliver it exactly how they want to have it. From a distribution perspective, it took a lot of work away from me that labels had full autonomy over how they wanted their releases put out there and how they wanted them delivered. So the sound has changed over the years. I guess at the start it was more electro than breakbeat. The thread that's followed through the whole thing has probably been that it's, it's really more about house music and that way allows it to be broad enough to, to include a few different things. I, it can be tech house, it could be progressive, it could be straight up house or a bit more technoid. It finds a middle point. Uh, I think that allows it to stay relevant while at the same time allowing me to release the music that I like and the artists that I like and most of the music comes from friends. Um, it wasn't until things started to gain more traction that I started looking at demos and looking at artists that I wasn't already uh, in contact with or hanging out with. Now things have progressed and I'm really quite proud of how they've progressed. I guess the next step is to go into parties, which I flirted with a bit uh, after Corona. I guess the next big, big thing is coming up is we've got a stage at Godwood Festival where some of our artists will be playing, uh, Rosa Terenzi, Kepler, Papa Nugs and myself and Salomo. Uh, I think a lot about um, the current state of the music industry. When I started being involved in this was through partying. I still enjoy that, but um, as you get older, you, you do it less and less. I guess I was always inspired by kind of the freedom of the whole thing. I think there will always be a, a scene and a place for the people that are interested in it in the way that I've always been interested in it. I also think that as it becomes more commercial and there's more money involved, what likely will happen is that things will break apart into the more commercial, bigger festival uh, scene and then the more underground scene. I'm sure that's happened already a lot of times in the music scene and I just haven't been aware of it. But ultimately techno will survive. There's a reason it's so popular and dance music is so popular and I also hope to, that the label expands into other genres of music as it gets older and as tastes change as they ultimately do and as artists change what they're doing, which in the history of the label, which is about seven years old now, we've already seen on micro levels. I mean, going from things like electro to tech house to whatever other genres we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I'd answer that one. <laughs>